this is my channel learning anatomy and uh, as you know i have started to do a series of lectures on thalamus and this is the third lecture thalamus connections and the uh, following chief neuronal loops are present between the thalamic nuclei and other areas of the cns these are the various nuclei shown right these are all discussed in the previous lecture all the thalamic nuclei, nuclei except the reticular nucleus right this is the reticular nucleus right so it says that all other thalamic nuclei except the reticular nucleus sends exons to the specific parts of the cerebral cortex and each part of the cerebral cortex sends back fibers reciprocally to the thalamic nuclei so such a strong connection reciprocal of the thalamus with the cerebral cortex this depicts that information received by thalamus is always shared with cerebral cortex and that cortex and the thalamus can influence and do influence each other's activities so you keep in view this picture it's a beautiful picture of the connection of the thalamus is a chief relay station for two sensory motor axonal loops that involve cerebellum and basal nuclei right and the first loop is the cerebellar rubrothalamic cortical pontocerebellar loop and the second loop is the cortical striatal pallidal thalamic cortical loop both of which are necessary for normal voluntary movement right so chief connection of the various thalamic nuclei are summarized in this figure afferents are on the left side and efferents are on the right side so i have to enlarge the picture for you this is the Im image and, and the, there i enlarge you see here this is you know shown is the posterior the recapitulate the previous things posterior root ganglion right and uh, first of all i focus on these nuclei nucleus cuneatus nucleus gracilis and also the nucleus of the spinal tract of the trigeminal nerve right this is the mandala oblongata this is the spinal cord right this is the pons and this is the uh, you know uh, midbrain and this is the cerebellum this thing and this is the thalamus and this is the hypothalamus right and uh, this is the basal nuclei where this is the lantiform nucleus and this is the chordate nucleus right and this is the cerebral cortex this is this is the occipital lobe and uh, here this is the parietal lobe and uh, this is the frontal lobe right and uh, here you see this is a cingulate gyrus right so this is the thing so coming back below this is the you see uh, at this uh, uh, tract coming from the nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus is the medial lamaniscus here you see and here this is the trigeminal lamaniscus and this is the spinal lamaniscus and uh, also the input from cerebellum all going towards the thalamus as its afferents right and uh, input uh, this input is also coming from this uh, this one this 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 from the cerebral cortex to the thalamus right and also the this is passing through the these basal nuclei and also the input is coming from the chordate nucleus and uh, here you see this is a hypothalamus also send, sending afferents to the um you know this thalamus right we're talking about thalamus and uh, these are shown on this side left side of the afferents and the efferents you see from here to this uh, this is you see these are the efferents to uh, hypothalamus um from thalamus to hypothalamus going and uh, then uh, also towards this whole cerebral cortex the main efferents of the thalamus going to the various parts of the this cortex cerebral cortex right so this is the thing so it's very important this you see pons and cerebellum as well i told you already so thalamic peduncles these are four peduncles efferents from thalamus reciprocal connections between thalamus and the cerebral cortex travel in four thalamic peduncles right i told you already in one lecture before anterior thalamic peduncle this is the anterior 
it passes through anterior limb of the internal capsule to reach the prefrontal cortex and cingulate gyrus right i will discuss with you internal capsule in a, in a separate lecture superior thalamic peduncle passes through posterior limb of the internal capsule to reach the premotor motor and the somatic sensory cortex this is the superior peduncle then is the inferior peduncle right? you see this this uh, passes below the landiform nucleus to reach the anterior temporal and the orbital cortex then is the posterior thalamic peduncle it passes through the retral antiform part of the internal capsule to reach the occipital lobe and the posterior parts of the parietal and temporal lobes this and every one of the four fans becomes incorporated into corona radiator right this will learn and as the projection fibers along with the internal capsule so now the discussion of the nuclei one by one first of all we will just uh, i have uh, done it in a very very simple manner this discussion uh, so that you should be able to discuss uh, to understand it in, in a simple manner i haven't uh, complicated with complex pictures and images it's a very simple and very very lovely we really, really like that discussion you see this is uh, first of all uh, all nuclei and this is i'm um, uh, telling you the afferents of the efferents of the anterior nucleus right you see so the anterior nucleus afferents are mammalothalamic tract hypothalamus and cingulate gyrus fibers come from here to this thalamus part anterior nucleus and the efferents from here go to hypothalamus and cingulate gyrus function of this nucleus is mechanisms of recent memory and the emotional tone then this is the dorsomedial nucleus you see this is the dorsomedial nucleus it's a large nucleus big big one is going through connected to all the other nuclei of the thalamus and afferents from um, here uh, coming to efferents come here from the prefrontal cortex hypothalamus and other nuclei of the thalamus efferents go to the prefrontal cortex hypothalamus and other nuclei of the thalamus functions the integration of somatic visceral and olfactory information in relation to emotional feelings and subjective states then is the lateral dorsal lateral posterior and pulvernor right Did you see these three nuclei lateral dorsal lateral posterior and this is the largest nucleus of the thalamus pulvernor and afferents of these three nuclei are cerebral cortex other nuclei of thalamus efferents come go to cerebral cortex of the nuclei of the thalamus function is not known and the ventral anterior nucleus you see ventral anterior this is the ventral anterior nucleus afferents are from reticular formation corpus striatum substantia nigra premotor cortex and other thalamic nuclei efferents go to reticular formation corpus striatum substantia nigra premotor cortex and other thalamic nuclei its function is that it influences activity of the motor cortex ventral lateral so this is the ventral lateral nucleus afferent and efferent similar to ventral anterior nucleus but also considerable input from the cerebellum and some input from the red nucleus right function it influences motor activity of the motor cortex then is the vpm ventral posteromedial nucleus its afferents are first you see it in the large picture ventral posteromedial this is the vpm afferents are this vpm are trigeminal laminiscus cuspidary fibers and efferents are primary somatic sensory cortex which are broad main areas 3 1 and 2 right function is it relays common sensation to consciousness then is a vpl you see this ventral postural lateral nucleus you see this is a ventral postural lateral nucleus afferents 
coming from medial and spinal lamina sky and if it's going to primary somatic sensory cortex broadman areas three one and two its function is it relays common sensation to consciousness right this also relays common sensations to consciousness vpm and vpl also relays common sensations to consciousness same function then are the intralaminar nuclei yes you see these are already discussed nuclei but this is the afferent in different discussion here you see this is the internal medullary lamina and these land nuclei are lying here this is the internal medullary lamina along with the nucleus this is the intralaminar nucleus here you, this is like afferents are reticular formation spinothalamic and trigeminothalamic tracts and the efferents are uh, go to cerebral cortex via other thalamic nuclei corpus striatum function influences level of the alertness and consciousness that is the midline nuclei what are the midline nuclei these are the midline nuclei the nuclei of the midline Afferents are the reticular formation. Efferents are not known. Function is also not known. Reticular nucleus. You see, this is the reticular nucleus. You see this reticular nucleus. Its afferents are from cerebral cortex and the reticular formation, as the name suggests, and the efferents are from other thalamic nuclei. Function is the cerebral cortex regulates the thalamus. Then are the medial and lateral geniculate bodies, the metathalamus. And uh, you see, this is the medial geniculate body, and this is the lateral geniculate body. First, we'll discuss medial geniculate body. Its afferents are inferior colliculus, lateral laminiscus from both the ears, but mainly the contralateral ear. Efferent are auditory radiation to the superior temporal gyrus, and its function is hearing. I told you already the memory chip medial m for music for hearing that is a lateral geniculate body this is the lateral geniculate body its afferent is the optic tract if it is the optic radiation the visual cortex the occipital lobe and the function is a visual information from opposite feed the fusion uh, the memory tip is l for light and the light comes it's perceived you know, from uh, you know i this is the visual information the optic tract right thank you very much for this listening to this brief lecture and i will come up with the next uh, lecture on the thalamus and stay tuned and uh, support my channel by subscribing and pressing the bell icon and uh, comment down below and do share it thank you very much goodbye please stay safe